So what did Fern mean to Sunnyside? A lot more than most of us know, including myself, she was very much a part of this community. I first got to know her when she applied to become part of the bereavement services. Now, that was wonderful, except we had just all finished our training. Michael Bilo was head of pastoral care at that time, and he set up with Shirley Davis and Ray Moyes a training session. It was run by a social worker from Ogerhanger Hospice who trained the clergy at, at the diocese. And it was a very complete course, and a lot of us did it, and a few of us decided to start this bereavement services. Now, it was underway. Maggie sitting over there was the person who put it all in order and did all the hard work. I brought all the structures from the hospice, which she put in place, and, and we got started. But Fern hadn't done the training. But I had not long taken over running the family services at the hospice and was just about to start training. And my predecessor had taken on somebody from the other churches just to train them for them. So I thought, I'll do the same. And Fern came to that training service. She came just for Sunnyside, but she loved it so much that she stayed for about 15, 20 years on the helpline, manning the helpline on Monday nights. She loved the hospice. And it did us a lot of good as well because she had the monthly trainings of the hospice as well. So she was well, well trained for us as well. Now I'm going to tell you a funny story about that because we've got two people here who were on that training, Kay and Celestia. One of the evenings was run by Colin Murray Parks, the great bereavement guru worldwide. We were all so excited it was coming and sitting on the edge of our seats. Now Fern worked with Colin Murray Parks at the Tavistock. She settled down in her seat at the end of the day and quietly fell asleep. We never let her forget it. <laughs> Colin Murray Parts, I can still see to this day his wry smile full of warm affection. And I was thinking, that's what we felt for Fern, warm affection. She had that effect on us. Well, she came on the team at Sunnyside. And in Sunnyside, we had monthly supervisions. Huge confidentiality. Nobody knew who was visiting each other. Even the people on the team didn't know. But we had to relate to something. And Fern had the most wonderful names for people that she saw. There was a matchstick lady. Now, the matchstick lady lit her fire every night, but never threw the matchsticks away. She left them in a pile in the fireplace. And there was a lady with a smiling dog. And will we ever forget the lady who lived in the countryside with an orchard she was Pippin because she had red, shining cheeks. She just brought her personality to everything and also her gentle way of doing things. We'd been trained um, also by Samaritans, who were also a Christian organization, but we were trained not to talk about her face. And of course, people did ask us about that. And how did you deal with that? Well, Fern would say something like, Oh, I don't know anything about that. Would you like to talk to the vicar? And the vicar would go along and talk to them. And although Fern never talked about her face, it was amazing how many of our ladies and the gentlemen came along to songs of praise. And there was one lady that she took the, sun, the sundial to. She, the lady asked for the sundial. And long after she'd finished visiting her, she popped the sundial, which was our magazine at the time, through her door. She always went the second mile. But her great gift to Sunnyside was the memorial path. She was, the, she was quite shocked there was nothing. It's hard to imagine now, but there really wasn't much at that time for ashes. And the graveyard was getting full. And she felt strongly about this, so she started to visit other churches to see what they did. And when she went to other places, like to Catherine's, she'd visit churches there, and she'd look to see what they did. She'd bring it back to supervision, and we all talked around it. And when she was happy, we took it to the vicar, who was delighted and said, we'll take it to the diocese. Well, of course, the diocese turned it down. 
at least a couple of times. But it was eventually passed, and it wasn't just for Sunnyside, because the diocese took it on as a template for other churches as well. And in fact, we know that churches throughout England have come to look at our memorial path. And for those who don't know what it is, you can see it. It winds through the grounds, and halfway up there's a seat. It's beautifully planted out, and there's a place where people can just sit and be there. It's a great gift to Sunnyside, that memorial path. Where I really got to know her through was through gardening. And Ken, who helped her with the garden, is here today. And she so loved that garden. So did we. If you weren't there in spring or early summer, the patio, the large patio, was absolutely full of plants that were being grown for the National Trust and for John here. She actually got me quite involved in that as well, and Humphrey as well. She got you involved, didn't you, in planting up things for the National Trust. We had very strict instructions. You were to try and take them up in October, no later than March or April, because they had to have good roots. And you had to take them up early, because they were run by volunteers, and they didn't water them properly, and they'd be dead before they got onto the stalls. And the names all had to be in Latin, and you had to look it up before you wrote it down to make sure you had the spelling right. <laughs> oh, what a lot I learned from Fern and her garden. Before she left Orchard Hill, she called John and said, come and help yourself to things for the National Trust. And John, bless his heart, as he did this many times, got a group of people in various days to go to lift up. Now, Ian and I went on the first day and Fern was there and she was telling us what to lift and what was good for cuttings and what took easily. And we went home with about three days of work of potting on and things to do. And you probably had three days of that at least. <laughs> and off they went to the National Trust. Now that day, she gave me a route from the front of this rosemary. And she told me that it was from her garden, her grandma's garden, and was very, very lovely. And you wouldn't get one like this nowadays. It got a bit wild, but the taste from it was superb. And Catherine recently told me that it wasn't just from her grandmother, it was from her grandmother's wedding bouquet. And it really is quite beautiful. And I've taken lots of cuttings, lots of, lots of them went to John, Lots, one has gone to Cumbria to my son. Quite a few people here, I think, have got cuttings of this as well. And anybody who wants some can have some. And it was just a lovely, lovely time getting to know her. And thinking of Rosemary, I know two sayings about Rosemary. The first is, there's Rosemary, there's Rue. And Rue means sorrow and regret. And there's a lot of sorrow today that Fern's no longer with us. And the other thing that I know about Rosemary is Rosemary is for remembrance. Fern, we're going to remember you often. Thank you for being here and for being so much a good friend to Sunnyside, but to most of us here today as well. Thank you.